All right, we're here with a 93 Mazda RX-7, and we are about to go through the transmission and inspect it. And we are going to do it using the holy grail of Mazda workshop manual. We're doing this by the book. Help me create more content videos for you. Please subscribe now, like the video, ring the bell notification. First step is to degrease, clean, and pressure spray this transmission. Be careful not to get water into unwanted areas unless you plan on disassembling it, drying it all out. You don't want water in your transmission floating around. After agitating with a wire brush, I've removed the bolts for the bell housing and gently tap it off. Go ahead and put the bolts back into the transmission so I don't lose them. Same with the throw-out bearing assembly. So now we're going to drain the transmission. This plug right here gets pulled and drained. This plug right here gets pulled. These are the two fill plugs. At times I use a plastic razor blade as a wedge so that it doesn't damage the aluminum along with a dead blow hammer. Okay, rear of the transmission, we've got the backup indicator switch we're going to remove with a 24 millimeter wrench. Okay, we've got the neutral switch also on the driver's side of the transmission. All these are 24. On the passenger side, we've got the one, two switch. And then we've got the speedometer sensor, 10 millimeter. Removing the bolts from the tail shaft and then again working it loose with a plastic razor blade and a dead blow hammer with wood. Here we are knocking out the pins for the shift linkage and again you can see these plastic razor blades I'm using as wedges. Went ahead and removed the speedometer gear right here with the two C-clip rings around it. Bagged it up. Marked the rings with uh, paint pins in a series. One mark for this one facing out. One, two marks for this one facing out. So that way I could kind of reference how this thing is going back on and make sure that all the pieces are in the same part. Then I went ahead and took the C-clamp out of this, marked it, one, because it was the first on the side that's facing out. Took the washer off, marked it two, because it's the second one, and marked it on the side that's facing out. Gonna bag that up. And we've got this ring around these two retainer clips. I'll go ahead and just gently pry off. And I'm gonna mark it once I get it off. You see I expose these two little retainer clips and I'm going to 
gently pry these off and mark them up so that way I can get this whole bearing off. Okay, this is how I made my special extended jaw pullers. I uh, added two pieces of metal, made sure all the holes were drilled in the same position, that way it's all even. <clears throat> we're going to tighten it up. We've got a rag here around to protect the shaft. We're going to pull off that bearing. I'm slowly turning this with a big extension and a socket. Being careful with a rubber mallet to kind of keep this straight. So if it starts bending one way, I'm tapping it with a mallet. Not getting it too crooked, but just keeping it as straight as I can. And just kind of speed up the process. I'm using a little bit of heat on the bearing. I'm probably going to replace these bearings. So, so this is a long process. Just be patient and work it out slowly, carefully, and you won't break anything. All right, it is now morning. We've let the whole assembly cool down. That way we could throw some heat on the bearing with the main shaft completely cold and get some good expansion. Hopefully catch the point to where you see this bearing pop off. Oh yeah, I feel it. It's losing its resistance. From the moment of truth, this has been about an hour worth of work. There we go. This thing is really hot, so I'm gonna make sure not to touch it with my hands. There we go. It's out. And you can see you got a retaining two end clip with a ring around it to hold it on the place. We're gonna pull that out next. All right, now the thicknesses on these on the front clips and on the rear clips are different, so Mazda recommends you keep them separate, that way you don't mix them up. That was easy. Then we've got this washer right behind it. Carefully slide that off the assembly. We've got access to the reverse gear and fifth gear assembly. Now we are going to remove the counter shaft bolt off of the top of this bearing with a 32 millimeter socket. I jammed a rag in the gears to keep it from turning the assembly. Let's hope this works. And breaker bar. All right, now we're gonna remove the fifth gear's counter and fifth gear. There's a pellet, steel pellet right here I wanna remove with a magnet. There we go. This should slide right off. Here we got the 41 millimeter socket that we're gonna custom make to get this bad boy off. And we got this little shim right here. Pulls out right behind it. Okay, we're gonna remove this 12 millimeter set bolt and seal washer that holds the counter reverse shaft in place. Okay, now we're going to remove the fifth and reverse housing. I'm going to slowly tap it to break the seal on it. All right, we're going to go ahead and remove these three cap plugs with their packing springs and dent balls. We're going to use a magnet to fish out the dent balls. Next, we're going to tap this pin out of the shift fork. Okay. 
All right, next we're gonna remove that clip that I'm pointing to with the punch off of that fifth reverse shift lever. A good trick I used to relieve pressure off the spring was to push this shift fork forward so that I relieved pressure off the spring. It should make that C-clip right there come off a little bit easier. So we popped the C-clip off of this reverse fifth gear shaft. And uh, I found the easiest way to do it is to stick a metal rod about the same diameter as this shaft hole in to control it. And that way you can um, rotate it. On the other hand, with a pair of long needle nose pliers that we could slip it off while you're holding it in position with the left hand and the push pin or punch. You hold it, push it down, get it right over that hole, you're golden. It's the best way to go about that. We are going to hammer out the pin that holds the third and fourth shift gears and the first and second shift gears in these two windows. I'm going to zoom in, throw a little light on it. Let's see if we can get the flash turned on. There we go. All right. I'm going to get a use hammer. Get a punch that is smaller than the diameter of this hole that we're driving the pin through. Solid taps. Being careful where you're hitting. There we go. Throw some good slugs on it. When it's getting flush, you want to be careful. Push it straight through without hitting the body of the shift fork. Okay. I'm going to flip this thing around and make sure we're not beating into anything. Okay, see here is the bottom side of that shift fork where we're driving out the pen. I wanted to show you that there it is down there. We're just checking to make sure that it's not banging on anything so we don't mess ourselves up trying to remove this thing. Although the angle makes it look like it's really close to this counter shaft synchro gear, it's not the case. It's not even a counter shaft, it's a main shaft. We're going to do the same thing on the other window. Take that same punch and punch it out making sure that it's not going to bang into anything because it is possible for you to bottom out on the synchro gears if you're not being careful banging this first one out so be careful next step is to on stake this nut best possible scenario is you use a punch but not a pen type punch like this one here a flathead screwdriver type punch Get it thick though, that way it doesn't flex on you. And you want one with a perfect width to slide right in between this little narrow area and in behind that folded piece of metal. Now, you don't want to just bang a hammer on this because this thing is like a spring, jumps right off. So what you want to do instead is hold down this with it wedged underneath the nut flange then bang it with a hammer. I can't do this with two hands because one hand is holding the camera. Hold on, sorry for the shakiness. That's where the banging comes in. Okay, let's see if my knees will hold this. Okay, you wanna hold it right there under the flange of the nut and bang it with a hammer. Maybe even on this side for more leverage. But you want to put tension on this. That way this thing doesn't go flying out. Now we're going to put both synchros into a gear. That way we can lock the drive shaft and the main shaft so that we can take this nut off without the whole assembly spinning. Now with both first, second, third, and fourth in gear, we're going to rotate this thing sideways. We've got this locked so it can't turn. I'm going to slide on this big custom made 41 millimeter socket and 
very carefully remove this nut, making sure that that tab is bent enough as to not scrape up those threads because if you jack up those threads, it's gonna trash your main shaft. All right, we got this nut broke loose and that was on there so tight. I'm not gonna lie, I had to use this inch drive pneumatic impact gun, more like a cannon. This thing is huge, probably from the 1920s. And to break that off. And so we're gonna go ahead and just slide off this flange nut carefully around the bearing surfaces of the main shaft. Now that we got the flange nut out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove this whole reverse slash fifth gear hub assembly, keeping track of where everything goes. We're going to slide off the outer bearing races, the inner bearing races, the actual bearings very carefully. Let's see if I can get a little slip on this. Ah, oh, there we go. Tricky little part. And then we've got the plate. Four bolts. You'll notice the holes. One which my thumb is covering. Bam. Keep track of the assembly. Pull that off the main shaft. Then we got the counter shaft. This little gear right here is completely loose and ready to come out. Let's dig into this. Here's where we start getting into some custom tools. What I did was I went ahead and removed this nap ring off of the front of the main shaft bearing um, right on here. It retains it from moving off the shaft. Went ahead and removed it using some uh, snap ring pliers. Then I rotated the opening of this outer diameter snap ring 90 degrees from these openings here. Get you a better shot. These openings here right now uh, let the gear pullers in behind this snap ring that's attached to this main shaft bearing. Now this whole assembly is kind of custom. You got to feel out what works best for you. I got a large pair of gear pullers with some small claws um, ground down, specially angled to fit around that main shaft. Then to hold this together while I'm putting clamping force on this, um, from spreading apart is a big C-clamp. Hold that together. I'm going to slowly tighten this, then tighten the C-clamp, then tighten this more until I work this bearing all the way off the shaft. It's a, it's a delicate process and you're probably going to slip the C-clamp off a few times, but with enough persistence, you'll get it. Another thing that manual recommends is to put a Special service tool in between the main drive gear bearing. Um, basically what this means to me is we're sticking a steel bar in between the fourth synchro gear and the fourth gear itself. I'll show you what that looks like for me. Okay, I've got the steel little ruler, otherwise known as a machinist's ruler, I think. And see if I can get more light in there. I've got it stuck right in through here so that these shafts don't slide back and forth when I'm pulling on them. You can see how right here, I've got it pinched off with a little clamp. You can also use um, vice grips to weigh that down. And that's gonna prevent this shaft from sliding the whole assembly back and forth as you try to pull this bearing off. And to tell you the truth, there wasn't even initially any room to stick this ruler in between the gears. Um, that's when this hammer right here came into play and I just smacked it a few good times and that pushed the whole counter shaft assembly this way so that I had enough room to stick this ruler in between the counter shaft gear and the main shaft gears so that when I pull on this bearing with the puller, it's not going to slide this whole assembly. It's only going to pull this bearing off because this bar going across is going to retain the assembly. So 
because I only have two hands and I'm my own filming crew, I'm going to wrestle this off on my own and then I'll show you the end results. One thing I do want to mention before I start pulling on this thing is that if you do notice that the whole shaft assemblies start to um, move inside of the housing, and you can tell that by the way they rotate, if it uh, is rotating and rubbing up, the gears rubbing up against the inside of the housing anywhere, you want to check the four points mainly, where the counter shaft front and back touch the housing and where the main shaft front and back touch the housing. Um, as you're pulling on this, you want to constantly see that you've got a little bit of free play. If you do, in fact, start to get the whole shaft moving, you can correct it with this hammer. Uh, I'm using a soft blow hammer so that it's not going to cause any damage. Um, I'm going to either tap it on whatever end is appropriate to make sure that this gear assembly is free and rotating. Also, as I torque this thing down, this is going to twist, you know, back and forth as the pressure is applied and I'm just going to make small adjustments and keep it as straight as possible and I'm going to use a soft blow hammer to correct on both sides to make sure this remains straight because it's probably going to take a lot of force to pull this off depending on your situation. Also when I custom made these extensions for the jaw pullers um, I put a bolt through this back part here that way this jaw puller can't just swing through this gap opening right here it actually is wedged against this bolt so that the force is put onto clamping down right here. All right, so you can see the custom extensions I made on this puller. And basically I just drilled holes on the top of four bars to make two sides per arm. And then this bolt right here is blocking this little um, clamp from swinging through like a pendulum. That way it can actually kind of lock onto it. And then I plan to use this vise or a C clamp and I'm gonna clamp it together that way. It doesn't just pull apart when I go to put tension on it. Another important thing is that this C-clip that goes around the bearing, there's a groove in the bearing, which just slides into, you can see right there. And it's important to rotate this opening 90 degrees away from these openings. That way you're not grabbing like right here on the edge and it just wants to pull this C-clip off the bearing. So. I'm gonna get this set up and then I'll show you how I pull this thing. It's a lot easier to get the counter shaft out. Just kind of like work it through this opening very carefully, not to scratch or damage anything. It gives you enough clearance to lift up and out and ladies and gentlemen here we have the counter shaft out of the transmission but we're not done yet because i would like to also introduce the main shaft Whew, this is a lot of work getting these things out there we go a shift fork all right and another shift fork all right here we go Oh my gosh, if you want a real big wrestling match, it's a perfect way to go about it. And then this whole assembly can tilt and work its way out. There you have it, counter shaft and main shaft. You see this is how it aligns and rotates. All right, community. So we just got done tearing down the FD RX-7 transmission gearbox and full assembly. Let me show you what we got going on on the bench. So here's our workbench. We got the main shaft from the gearbox, first, second, and third and fourth hub assemblies. 
as well as a counter shaft. And we're going to pull off these two hub assemblies from the main shaft and this inner bearing race from the counter shaft. We got our little stopper so the whole main shaft doesn't go rolling off of the workbench. And first thing we need to do is pull off this little snap ring off of the third, fourth gear hub assemblies to allow for the hub assemblies to be pressed off of the main shaft. It's got our nice little snap ring pliers. We're just gonna spread this apart. You always wanna replace these snap rings when you're reassembling. This could be a little bit tricky, but we're gonna go ahead and spread this as far as we can. There we go. Pretty easy. So what we've done here is we got a bearing puller from Harbor Freight and I've just upgraded this with some all thread and new nuts to extend around this housing in between the first and second gear hub assembly and the third and fourth gear hub assembly. Now the book calls to push this uh, third and fourth gear hub assembly out first, but because I am working with the tools that I have, I'm going to push the first second gear hub assembly out first. We're going to carefully put this into our press as to not damage or ding any of the hub assembly components. Okay, it's important to lay this across the support areas. We're going to gently press this hub assembly off of the main shaft. Be sure to hold the bottom of this assembly so that it doesn't fall through and drop on the ground. Keep slowly pressing it through. We're seeing progress, that's a good sign. And you're gonna start to feel it get a little loose. All right, here we go, feel it, there it is. All right, success. Okay, very carefully move everything out. And we're gonna slide this baby off. goes beautiful I'm gonna set this aside back on the workbench and I'm gonna set up to press off the third and fourth gear hub assembly careful not to scratch any bearing surfaces when pulling this thing off and then we're gonna flip it around you notice how the flat side was facing up to press you know that hub assembly off now we're gonna face it down to press the other hub assembly off so it's gonna look something like this, pressing up off the top of that main shaft. We're just gonna to have to adjust the press real quick. I've got the bearing uh, puller set up and it's around this lip, you'll notice, which is actually part of the main shaft, but it's laying up against this hub assembly gear, third and fourth, uh, as much as possible. in here very carefully. Okay. This is where it was important that we got that C-clip out of the way because it will allow for the third and fourth hub assembly, third and fourth gear hub assembly to be pressed off of the main shaft. So again, lower this thing down. All right, again, so we want to stop want to make sure this lines up properly with the center of the press and that we're looking all aligned all the way around. You want the uh, puller spread across the supports of the press like this. That way you get the most surface area to support the pressures that it's undergoing. And everything looks good. So we're going to go ahead and continue to apply a little bit of pressure slowly. And again, this should come out with not a whole lot of force. Okay, I'm supporting underneath. There we go. That was quick and painless. Supporting the main shaft with my other hand. There we go, we're loose. Go ahead and just let it fall through carefully. When I say fall, I mean a guided movement to get it out of the way. That's it, that's the main shaft. You got your pin roller here for the third and fourth gear hub assembly. 
I already removed the pin roller right here. It was riding on this surface for the first and second gear hub assembly. And it's all apart. All right, let's move to the last piece. All right, we got the counter shaft here and we got a smaller bearing puller. We just got it right around the lip of this inner bearing race, which came from a bearing, which we uh, pulled apart earlier when we were removing and disassembling the transmission gearbox. We got this pinned right in between the gear and the inner bearing race. I put a little bit of tension on it. You can see that bolt slightly spread, but um, let's go ahead and give this a go. Try to slide this inner bearing race off. As you're gonna see here, I actually had to disassemble the bearing puller and then reassemble it halfway through the press just because I cannot drop this whole assembly in between the uh, two bars as I was planning. I threw a little tightening down there with my steel fingers. All right, let's give this thing a go. <sighs> which in Australian means, let's go ahead and proceed with what we were doing. All right. Again, I'm gonna put my hand under the counter shaft. I wanna support this to not let it drop on the floor. Success. We've got the uh, main shaft that we first pulled the um, snap ring off of to enable us to press out the third and fourth gear hub assembly from the front. And then we were able to press out the first and second gear hub assembly from the back of this flange. So, you know, three pieces of that. These assemblies break down into further pieces like with the synchro ring um, you're gonna have to do an inspection check for worn parts and see what you need to replace or what you can keep there are certain parts you have to replace no matter what um, for example that snap ring um, it's outlined in the shop manual and I'm sure you can get a lot of reliable resources online the inner bearing race from the counter shaft bearing we pressed out uh, that tends to uh, kind of come apart when you're pulling it out of the gearbox. And so if that's stuck on your counter shaft, it's a nice easy way to get it off. Some of the arsenal, well, all of the arsenal we used for this job. Uh, we've got the bigger uh, bearing pullers with my uh, upgraded all thread and a few new nuts. And then we've got the smaller bearing pullers as well as this little rubber stop. Keep the whole assemblies from rolling off the desk. This little screwdriver helped me with this snap ring, snap ring pliers, and a adjustable wrench for the nuts, just for quick adjustment. And let us not forget, well, the light, that's important too. We got this nice little 12 ton press. All right, uh, we're all done. It wasn't hard last bit. It wasn't hard at all. It was intimidating a little bit, but it would have took me about five minutes had I not had to mess with the camera. So. This wraps up our whole transmission disassembly. Do me a favor, if you got any value out of this or you think anyone you know can get value out of this, go ahead and share the video. Please subscribe. We are gonna build this FD93 RX-7 from the ground up, uh, full rebuild, engine, everything. And I'd like you to follow along for the journey. Um, like this video comment on any videos you'd like to see or any questions you may have. I'd love the interaction and Thanks for watching